So let's look at the subject. I'm gonna tell you why I'm disgusted. So tonight, looks like sex will be our topic of discussion. Now see, sex isn't evil, for marriage is why God made it. But I know you're like, come on, man, that's too outdated. This is 2011, bro, we do it for recreation. And hey, if you're in college, you do it while you're wasted. But I wanna question this logic, I wanna pop off the seal, I wanna question something that we think is already a done deal. So take a rape victim, for example, and once it's revealed, when her bruises go away, is she totally healed? Nah, the damage is lasting, you can see it in her eyes. But if it was just abused recreation, why did it ruin her life? I mean, if sex is just for fun, why does it take such a toll? Maybe it's because you don't just have sex with a body, you have sex with a soul. Which means for me, there ain't no premarital loving. <laughs> and it ain't just because I want a baby in the oven, it's because I'm staying pure till the day that I'm a husband. But see, this wasn't always me. That's a guarantee. Let's go back in the past, see who I used to be. Now growing up, I never learned how to treat a lady. If I learned one thing from my dad, it was leave the mom, ditch the baby. Now I don't say that to get sympathy, I say that to be real. Because according to stats, about 40% of you know how that feels. So I let the TV show me what the music already told me. No dad at home, so I was letting MTV mold me. And they sold me, which is why my life revolved around what girl I could get next. My life revolved around this girl named Sex. Shoot, I'd get at her on the text, but I gotta confess, it seems the longer we dated, the bigger the mess. But then, my girlfriend was late on that time of the month. If you know what I mean, you understand when I say my heart sunk. I started to think about abortion, man. I started to butter it up. But it's funny, they don't make condoms for sin. You can't just cover it up. It was just a scare, but I knew a father I didn't want to be. <laughs> it's funny how I was pro-life until it happened to me. So dudes think twice before you desire her just because she's hot. Because the truth is, your body makes a promise whether you do or not. Sorry I digress though, let's get back to the topic. How there's some dudes who pressure her even when she says stop it. You're not a man, you're just a boy that can shave and you put on a good cover. Because if you don't respect her when she says no, you certainly don't love her. So how about you start studying her heart, stop studying her booty, or maybe invest the same amount of time in her that you do in Call of Duty. Because what makes you think you can get this girl and all of a sudden get naughty? Because you should have to touch her heart and her mind first before you ever touch her body. Because she longs to be accepted, she longs to be loved, so she gives herself up to another guy's lust. She thinks it feels good at first, but then she gets bitter. Because the promise of satisfaction, it never delivers. She's like, I don't want to, but it's just too tempting. So she keeps opening up the present just to find that it's empty. And then she starts to get confused. She keeps getting rejected by all these dudes. They tell her on a scale of 10, she's a two. But that ain't true. If she only knew that Jesus he loves and accepts us. Even when you don't want him, he'll never reject us. He heals us from that sin that totally infects us. And he does what condoms can't, he emotionally protects us. Now I know some of you hear this, you're gonna want to indict me. But we gotta think rightly, so I'll ask politely. Can you really say this isn't even true, just slightly? I mean, we touched the forbidden fruit, not to realize it's poison ivy, and now we're numb and we're itching, and we got a distorted psyche. You don't think you just do it, like your name was Nike not realizing that the consequences of your actions are oh so pricey. So this last story though is for those who think they're too dirty. This last story is for those who think they're unworthy. Read John chapter eight, the woman caught in adultery. The religious leaders throw her naked in the temple while she yells, don't murder me. They say, Jesus, the law commands us to stone this woman. And you hear the hate in their tone. Jesus pauses it and says, whoever is without sin, you can cast the first stone. I mean, can you imagine the sound? silence all around. You hear footsteps walk away, you hear stones hit the ground, and then Jesus kneels down. The woman thought it was her demise. He lifts up her face. You see the grace in his eyes. He says, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. I love you. I accept you. Mercy is yours. But if you're anything like me, you're like, no, that can't be. Why would he ever die for me? See, but then I saw that scene where I was redeemed. He reached out and touched me and said, Jeff, you're free. Instantly, I was wearing the brightest robe I'd ever seen. I was perfectly spotless. I was perfectly clean. So bright, in fact, man, I thought I'd go blind. I said, who's this? this? He said, actually, it's mine. So think twice before you eat what society feeds us. Come follow the king. His name is Jesus.